Hey everybody, welcome to my video about useful or little known iPhone features that almost seem hidden until they're pointed out to you. In this video, I'm going to show you some of what I think are some cool or obscure features of your iPhone that I've found out many people don't really seem to know about, so stay tuned! The first feature is how to block your phone number from showing up on caller ID. Do bear in mind that this option is dependent on your service provider supporting it, but if available, can be really handy if you want to surprise a friend. Go to settings, then scroll down and tap the phone menu, then tap show my caller ID. Now you can turn this feature on or off. The second feature that I feel is underused, but very powerful, is the iPhone search. It's almost as powerful as Spotlight Search on your Mac. Not only can you search your iPhone for apps, particular notes, books, messages, or podcasts, it will also search through maps, series suggested websites, social media, messages, emails, and even the App Store. But like Spotlight Search on your Mac, you can also do math problems, currency conversions, unit conversions, and even get answers to some questions like asking what the weather is like in Tokyo. To access the iPhone search feature, just swipe down in the middle of your iPhone's home screen. I found this to be a very powerful feature. Next, I've been surprised to learn that most people still don't know that Control Center can be customized. To customize Control Center, go to Settings, then tap Control Center, then tap Customize Controls. On this screen, you can add, remove, or organize the controls that appear in your Control Center. The list in this menu is top-down and corresponds to the order in Control Center going left to right for controls per line. Another feature that most people I found don't know is possible are the effects and screen animations you can send to people when using iMessage. After typing your message, press and hold the send button. Then, the send with effects screen will appear where you can add effects to the message bubble. There's also an option where you can add screen effects by tapping the screen option at the top. Once that's opened, you can swipe through all of the various options. There's quite a few and it seems like there's something for almost any occasion. I think they look pretty cool. Just remember these only work with iMessages, so if you're texting a non-iPhone friend, this feature will not be available. But it's really cool for any of your iPhone friends. The next feature I'm surprised isn't really common knowledge is how to turn your iPhone's keyboard into a trackpad. I use this feature a lot for moving the cursor around typed text when I'm composing a text or writing a note in the Notes app. On 3D Touch enabled iPhones, simply 3D Touch anywhere on the keyboard and you'll suddenly have this ability. On non-3D Touch enabled iPhones or iPads, simply long press the spacebar on the keyboard to get the same feature. I often find this to be an easier way to move the cursor around text than pointing with my finger. Another feature that hasn't really been heavily advertised, but I have talked about in previous videos, is the Measure app. I still talk to many people who don't know it's there, so I just want to go over it again for those of you who are not familiar with this great feature. It uses augmented reality to help measure things. I've used this plenty of times when looking at backpacks at the mall to see if my computer would fit in them. To use this feature, just launch the Measure app, and remember, you can use the iPhone search feature if you can't seem to locate it yourself. The app usually needs you to move your iPhone around first to calibrate it, but once that's completed, it's a great way to measure things. I found it's not 100% accurate, but it's usually not off by much. Also, while we're in the Measure app, I'd like to remind people that the Measure app also has a level in it, which I use whenever I hang pictures on the wall or need to level a table. The last feature I'm going to talk about today is far from new, but I find a lot of people haven't tried it for a long time and could be missing out on how useful it can be. I like to remind people about the 3D touch shortcuts on the home screen. Just how useful they are for each person is dependent on what apps they like to use. But in some situations, they really are helpful and in some cases even faster. The most popular ones I use are the 3D touch shortcuts for the Starbucks app, as this lets me use mobile order and pay faster than loading the app and then choosing order. I also use the 3D touch shortcuts on the settings app to connect to Wi-Fi hotspots when I'm at Starbucks or on the subway. And I use the one for the camera whenever I want to take a selfie, so I can load the app to the selfie mode right away instead of loading the app and then switching it over. And the last one I use most is the 3D Touch shortcut for the Uber app, as it lets you choose from your top two favorite locations. I recommend taking the time to check out the 3D Touch shortcuts on your favorite or most used apps to see if they have options that would benefit you and possibly even save you time. Are there any little known iPhone features I missed that you think everyone should know? If so, please share them in the comments below. If there's enough of them, I'll make a follow-up video explaining them and showing people how they work. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.